Welcome back to the channel. Today is another video on accounting based profitability analysis on SAP Osfarhana or margin analysis. In the last video, I did a full demo of the actual data flow from sales orders into margin analysis using predictive accounting. And in the video today, I will give you more details on predictive accounting. So what are the updates that happen to the database when we post a sales order? and how to find the predictive accounting documents, how to differentiate them from actual accounting documents. But before I start, I want to thank everyone who joined the channel membership program on YouTube to support the channel content. Thank you so much, and I will do my best to keep posting quality content. Also, I have added some configuration steps into the configuration manual that is shared with the elite members. So if you are an elite member, please check the configuration manual for the new updates. In SAP S4 HANA, predictive accounting data that is updated when we post a sales order is also posted to the Universal Journal, ACADOCA. And to display the Universal Journal, we can go to transaction SE16N. And here we insert the table name, ACDOCA, and we can insert a layout if you have any. And I will explain to you my layout right now. Then we can insert some selection criteria. The company code I'm using is AG01, so I will only display the documents that are posted to my company code. And also I have multiple ledgers activated because I'm using multiple business scenarios. The ones I'm interested in today are the leading ledger, and these are the mandatory ones. The leading ledger and the extension ledger that's configured for predictive accounting. And this is what I'm going to choose here. So click on multiple selection. The leading ledger is 0L. And the extension ledger I created is called EL. So these are the two ledgers. 0L will include only the actual accounting documents. So the documents that actually have a financial impact. While EL is the extension ledger, it includes only the predictive accounting documents. Then execute. And this is all I'm going to choose for now. Then I will click on number of entries to check how many entries I have in my company code. And here you see I have 633 entries. Remember this number. Now I'm going to post a sales order and then we will come back to Akadoka and see how many entries we have and how many new entries have been posted. Then I will show you these entries. Now to create the sales order, exactly as we did in the last video, the transaction is VA01, order type OR, insert the sales area data, sold to party is AG, AGC01, so you can insert any customer you want. And the material, let's say, for example, FG01, order quantity 200. Now, this is the sales order. I already have all the prices and everything maintained. I will save. Sales order 2778 has been created. Now, let's switch back to Akadoka and check again the number of entries. The number of entries now is 637. So we have four new entries that have been posted to my company code. Now, let's run the transaction to see the records we have. But before we do this, don't forget to remove the maximum number of hits. As we saw, we have 670 something uh, records. So here I will insert, for example, 800 to be sure that I see all the records that are available and then execute. Now, as you see here, number of hits is 637. If you find the number of hits here is equal to the maximum number that you inserted uh, in the selection screen, then you are not seeing all the records. So be careful because when you don't see all the records, you don't understand what's going on. So just be sure that you are displaying all the records that are related to your scenario. Now, the first thing about my layout is I am sorting with the timestamp. And this is very useful because it shows me the transactions that were posted the last at the top of the report. And this way I can easily tell which are the records that have been posted with my last transaction. So we have four entries, as we saw, because we moved up from 633 to 637 when we saved our sales order. And these are the four entries. And the timestamp field is easy to understand. It looks scary, I know. But if you press on the field or click on the field and then press on F1, it will explain to you how to understand it. So this field is equal to year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. This is why here we have 2021, 09, 26, and so on. Now, if we check the four records that were posted when we saved our search order, Number one, they are all posted to the extension ledger, EL. So as I told you, the predictive accounting data are post is posted to the, the extension ledger 
and not to the leading ledger because they have no financial impact. So they are all posted in EL. So first thing, if you want to create a report to do a report on predictive accounting details, it must be using the extension ledger. And then we have also here, this field is showing that this is a predictive accounting document. The field name is document status. And if you open the available uh, values here, we have P equal to predicted document. So this is how you can differentiate between actual accounting documents and predicted accounting documents. Predicted documents have no impact on financial accounting. They are only predicted. So all of the four documents we have until now are predicted documents. They are all marked with P. And then we have this field that's empty for now. And this will be updated when we do an actual posting. So when we convert a predicted line into an actual line, when we post a goods issue or a billing document, you will see how this will be updated. And I will show you this when we post the goods issue. And here we have the document number. And as you see, it is different from the actual documents. So the actual accounting documents start with 49, for example. But this one start with PA. So it's easy to identify the predicted accounting documents. And then we have the posting key and the account. So this is the financial accounting GL. This is the GL account that we, uh, we will post to when we actually convert this line into an actual line. And we have the quantity and the values and we, we have the profitability segment. I already explained what this is. So this is a combination of all the characteristics that are included in this line. And we have the sales order, sales order item and the different characteristics that are in the process and other values. Now let's go back and post an actual line. So the sales order that we created 2778, as you see here is the sales order number. I'm going to post a goods issue and a billing document and we can see how this will update our lines. So now switch back to the other screen and go to the outbound delivery transaction VL01N. Insert the shipping point. Here is our material. Now I will make this scenario as complicated as I can. So let's say, for example, I'm not going to deliver 200. I'm going to deliver only 50 units. And let's go to the picking tab. And here, let's say the pick to quantity is also 50 units. Storage location is 171B. And post goods issue. Now let's switch back to Akadoka and see how this is updated. So until now we still have 637 and I'm going to refresh and this way we can see immediately the impact that happened. Now we have 641 lines, which means that SAP has updated four additional lines. Now let's check them. One, two, three, four. So first we have two posted to leading ledger and two lines posted to extension ledger. These are predicted accounting documents. This is why the source, the our doc document status is P. And these are actual accounting documents. Now, the actual accounting documents are very easy to understand. They are debit to cost of goods sold and the credit to inventory. Same as any financial entry we did when we post a goods issue. And these have actual financial impact. As you see, the value, the quantity is 50 because this is the quantity that we issued. And the value is also adjusted to reflect only the 50 units that we sold. If we check the predicted accounting lines, why did SAP post two additional lines in predicted accounting? Because when we did the sales order, we had 200 units. But when we did the goods issue, we posted only 50 units. So now in predicted accounting, we should have a remaining of 150 units. And this is what SAP did. So SAP posted these two records to adjust the values that were posted in the sales order. And if you check here, these are predicted accounting documents. They have the status B. And also the obsolete reason, if you check, it is reduction posting. So you can easily say that these lines were posted to adjust the numbers that are in predicted accounting. And the quantity is posted with 50, and this is posted with an opposite sign to what was posted in the sales order. So for example, for the account 1340s, in when we did the sales order, we had a negative 200 units. But when we did the goods issue, SAP posted a debit of 50 to the same account. So now the net impact on this account is 150 units. And this is the actual remaining balance in predicted accounting. And also the same is adjusted with the values. So now you understand how SAP updates the database table. Now let's go back and also do the billing document and see the other update. To, do, to post a billing document, we go to transaction VF01. 
and this is our outbound delivery number and we click on post now it has been posted let's go back to akaduka and again we have 641 lines if we refresh now this moved up to 645 so we have four additional lines the same concept so we have two that are posted to predicted accounting to adjust the values and we have two that are posted to actual accounting to the leading ledger which is a debit to the customer account or accounts receivable and a credit to the sales revenue account. Now you understand the full updates that happen to Akadoka when we do the predicted accounting and when we also do the actual financial entries. The important thing when you run the SA16N and when you run Akadoka is don't try to filter with the sales order because as you see here, not all the lines will have the sales order in them. So if you filter with the sales order, you will never have the full vision on the actual update that happened. This is why I prefer using the timestamp so I can understand the full impact on the system. This is it for the video for today. I hope you found it interesting. For me personally, this has been very interesting because I never had to dig this deep into accounting-based Coupa. So I'm, I'm enjoying this too much. This is why in the next video, I will continue explaining the same topic, margin analysis. So I will move into other technical aspects. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave me your comments, and thank you for watching. See you next time.